All right, welcome to the 21 Convention in Orlando, Florida, 15-year anniversary. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to bring in this next person. You see, gentlemen, on the, the streets, you have your pimps, you have your max, you have your hustlers, you have your ballers. But the one thing that school books don't teach you in and off the streets is something called the free agent lifestyle. And the gentleman that I'm about to bring up is an author of two books. He has his own YouTube channel that he's been going live on that you can check out, Coach Greg Adams. He's been doing it for three years. He has an Instagram following. But the thing about him, he is all man. And gentlemen, I ask all you guys, please take notes because the information that he's going to give you is very vital, not for just today, but also for tomorrow for each and every one of you. And make sure you ask questions because it's very important to ask questions because this man right here has a lot of information. But with that said, I, it gives me an honor, privilege to introduce to you Coach Greg Adams. Thank you, my brother. Love you. Thank you, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, there's no ladies in this audience. That was yesterday. Shout out to you brothers, man. Thanks for coming in and checking me out. Today, we're going to talk about protecting your meat. Everybody knows what that is, right? If you've been watching my show, you know what meat is. If you've never watched my show, I'm going to introduce you to what meat is. These are your most important resources. Not the meat between your legs. Come on, get your head out of the gutter. This is a great conference. The, the, the great thing about this conference is you're getting a variety of subject matters for different places and different spaces in your time, all right, in your life. Like there may be a time that you just need to go by yourself and be a monk and get your life together, free agent lifestyle. There may be a time where you wanna learn about women and learn the best way to approach them or deal with them or put them in a proper perspective. That's all important as well because there's a time and a place for that in your life. So when we talk about meat, we are definitely talking about the assets that you trade to access women. Dare I say sex with women. You trade your meat. Now a lot of you guys really undervalue your meat. You think with your other meat. And that's what encourages you to access women. And you think that the women have more value. You may be intimidated by them. You say, These people have more value than them. But if you listen, you're the one with the most value. And you trade the most to access the one or two things that she might bring to you. So when we talk about meat, the one thing I try to tell guys is you have to have discipline with your meat the meat between your legs and the meat that is the value, the meat that she really wants from you. Now, there's some women that like that salami between your legs. She, she loves that. They love it. And we live in a time where they can just be frivolous with it. They can enjoy it. They have no more shaming. They can enjoy it in their youth. They don't have to protect it. They can get flown out by athletes and celebrities. They can go all across college campus and get their back blown out at Arizona State. They can do all of that and then they can go find themselves a husband afterwards. This is fantastic. It's a fantastic time to be a woman. For a man, it's a little bit difficult because now you have to chase after these individuals to get with them. And you have to use your head upstairs before you use your head downstairs or else it's gonna be a problem. You're gonna be distracted in life. You're gonna say, I want the love of my life and I want our love to be like no other love. Unfortunately, it's not that time. We don't have that that much. What you have to have is meat discipline. But this is the discipline we're talking about. Meat stands for money, energy, attention, and time. Money, energy, attention, and time. Okay? Every relationship that you get in is transactional. You are gonna trade something for something. Now, there are some philosophies that might tell you as men that you can get access to women and or sex for free. 
And they're going to come up with several strategies. They may, talk, they may say game and clever pickup lines, or they may say love or romance or all of these things. Let it be known they're talking about this. Money, energy, attention, and time. That is the value that you give to women. And they say it all the time. And I'm going to break that money, energy, attention, and time to make sure you understand that there's no, no such thing as free access to women. It doesn't exist. You can take shortcuts all you want. There is no such thing. They are requesting these things from you, more or less. And there's a silent contract in which you give them this, what they want, these most important elements, in addition to the meat, that salami between your legs, you give them that too. But they are requesting this on a daily basis. They're going to say, you need to make this amount of money or I don't consider you valid. Okay, you got to give me attention. I need to get some time with you. Okay, we're going to talk about how all of these are the same. And some of these values, men argue over the internet as to how a man chooses to exchange this transaction with the woman. I want you to just think about this for a second. If I take money, I have a little pointer here, it's not working. If I take money in a transactional relationship with a woman, and I said, I'd rather not give her energy, attention, or time, and I take money and I just say, here, here's 250 bucks, give me what you're willing to offer me for that. And I get access to the woman, access to the sex. Some men say, oh no. That makes you a low value man. What kind of guy would pay to access women? See, I can get her for free while you have to pay. And then I go and say, no, 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 no. See, that money I put on top of energy, attention, and time. I did not want to trade energy, attention, or time. I wanted to trade with money. Because energy, attention, and time has the same value to me. Maybe not to you, maybe not to most men, and this proves why most men are broke, because they don't understand energy, attention, and time is the same as money. It actually, the other ones actually have more value to you than the money. If I trade with time and not money, I'm gonna get this woman for absolutely zero dollars. What must I do with the time? I must take the time and elevate it, and spend more time, invest more attention to get the woman. Now this guy says, see, <laughs> I didn't have to pay a dime. But unfortunately, he lost a lot of money. He lost his value. He traded something that, quite frankly, believe it or not, is more important to the woman than the money. And it is more important to you because you lost value in yourself and you had to jump through all these hoops and hurdles and be a dancing monkey and entertain her, run pickup lines and game, go to the nightclub, buy your little outfit, walking up to broad after broad, and you spent time, your ass stayed up late, and then you woke up late to go to work, et cetera, et cetera, and you lost what? Money. What's valuable to you? Money? For most men, Money is the most important. And I'd rather say, I got 250 here, here we go, bye-bye, so I can focus on the other stuff. See, and to me, there's no such thing as free when you're dealing with women. So I want you guys to understand that. Do you, does that mean you have to use one resource over the other every time? It does not mean that. You just got to figure out what's valuable to you. If you're not disciplined with your meat, your, your meat between your legs, you're going to be frivolous with this, and it's going to cost you everything. You're going to marry a woman. She's going to say, I love you. And you're going to say, I love you too. We can go the distance. And then at some particular point, that changes and you put in a lot of meat, which the most transactional that will always say free women cost the most, by the way. 
Free women cost the most. My love doesn't cost a thing. You're definitely going to be paying a lot of meat with that woman. A lot more meat than any other woman you've ever met in your life. And then when she divorces you, you're going to give up a lot more meat. She's going to just cut all that meat up. So when you're dealing with them in this idea, you have to understand what you're changing, exchanging. Now, I'm going to make sure I prove that all of that has the same value, no matter what. So when we talk about money, one thing that we'll say and one thing that is, has to be understood is I can make money. I can spend money, spend money, and then the money can be replaced, right? I can go back and trade time for money. I can go back and use some of my value to create some more money. But the one thing I do with money is I spend it. Spend money. Everybody got that. That, that one everybody knows. That one everybody knows. Now, what everybody doesn't realize is that time is also spent. She might say, we need to spend more time. We need to spend more time. So it's a resource that is valuable to her. The person I just spent the money on, she may not see any more additional value in me and she just says, just give me the money, all right? Then I'll go to a man that can spend some time with me. And when you spend that time, unlike money, time cannot be replaced. There's no way you can get it back, okay? But I can make some more money back. So what has the most value to you as a man? Time. Time is way more important than the money. And sometimes it's better off paying the money up front than spending the time and losing not only time, but money. You don't get either back, especially the longer you go in relationships. These are all decisions that you have to make in your life. And I find that a lot of guys, a lot of men on the internets, are not really explaining that thoroughly. They're not really telling you how important your time is. And they're telling you to go out here, learn this strategy, walk up to 100 women, spend all of this time trying to do what? Get a low percentage, low value woman that is just waiting for you to come up to approach them. And they're gonna give you something that they were gonna give any guy that came up that approached them. Your percentages are low. When I go up to a woman that I know would trade money for access to her, it is a very low time investment. I know where she is. I can determine if she's safe or not. And I'll say, my investment in you is very minimal. I make a lot of money. This is a lot of money for you. You're willing to do it. Therefore, this is a small investment for me. It is a big return for you. I can recoup what I make back, what I just gave you, in, in half an hour. And it's worth my money to spend less time on you because my time is more valuable than you and the money. But the time, I can't get back. So we spend time trying to find the love of our life. Some of you men need to treat time better than you treat money. And you need to treat money, basically, or there's a phrase that uh, an investment guy that I always uh, listen to, he always say, uh, treat money the way you want money to treat you. So if you're behind on your bills, you pay the minimal, minimum credit, you know, your minimum payment on your credit card, that's how money's going to treat you. All right, let's talk about attention. Attention is a woman's currency. I want you guys to understand that. How do we know that? You go onto the internet. I'm going to come back to that. Okay, you go onto the, where's the slide? We're talking about attention. Okay. Actually, I'm going to go back. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover this slide right here because a lot of guys need to know this right here. Time and money. Time and money. How many older guys have found this out? <laughs> you spend all your life chasing money. Some of you guys spend all your life in your youth chasing women. 
And you spend all your time life chasing the money, and I'll show you a graph on how this works too. And then by the time you catch up to it, you run out of time. And then you say, damn, if I would have actually spent more time in my youth focusing on catching this money, I might not have run out of time and I could have enjoyed the money. Most men, most millionaires, the average millionaire is age 62 in our country. The average millionaire is age 62. And I'm going to read a quote by Napoleon Hill that said, you probably could have sped up that process if you got control of your meat. All right, that's at the end. All right, so we're talking about attention. What do they say about attention? If somebody wanted to get my attention right now, the teacher in the classroom, she said, hey, Mr. Adams, what would she say? She wants me to give her, her my attention. She'll say, pay, pay attention. Pay attention, right? So that means that's a currency. Like I spend money and spend time, I pay attention. Now, isn't that all the same? Yes, it's a similar value. It's a very similar value to everybody that you're interacting with. You spend money, spend time, and pay attention. We use it the same way. And the other person that is getting the transaction treats it the same way. As a matter of fact, if I'm a dating coach, I would tell you, pay attention to women. But don't pay them money. No, no, no. But pay a lot of attention to her. Walk up to her. Tell her this. Tell her that. Follow her around. When she walks away, step in front of her. Pay, 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 pay. And then eventually you pay so much attention to her that she lies on her back and lets you rub her belly. And what did that cost you? Time. You paid so much attention to her, it finally broke her ass down, and then now you get to access the woman. Now, how much did that attention cost you? Good morning, honey. Are you having a good day? Fantastic. I'm interested in your details of your day. Great. How's your family doing? Well, oh my gosh, uh, perhaps one day I'll get to meet your parents, but until then, I would like to pay attention to you. Hey, why don't we go to a dinner? Why don't we go to a movie? You get on her Instagram and you scroll, oh, I like your post. Double tap. All right, you're giving her attention, comment section, like, water spritz emoji, eggplant emoji, heart, heart eyes. You guys on your Instagram, scroll, 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 like, 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 like. And you just paid her attention. And attention is her currency. Do we see that today? Everybody, everywhere is seeking attention. And they're doing so many things to seek it. The girls are getting a little bit more naked by the moment, getting this. And as a return, sometimes she gets money from guys. Some guys will say, come to Dubai. We'll doo-doo on you, and then we'll send you back. I swear to God, this has happened. We'll send you back home with uh, $30,000. And the girls are doing that. Okay? Some girls get on to sugar daddy apps while they're in college. They get attention, and then some guy pays her, and then they go back to their sorority house with a couple of Gs in their pocket. Unbeknownst to you, you're paying attention to that girl. Oh, you look fabulous today. You're waiting to get in there, and you're in line with the money and the time guy. And it's all the same. Spend time, spend money, pay attention. The attention thing to her is everything. Watch this. If you remove attention from any relationship, you would immediately lose the lover. If you remove attention from any relationship that you're pursuing, you stop text messaging the girl. You stop liking her pictures on Facebook and Instagram. You stop calling her. You stop inviting her out. She would immediately leave that relationship. That right there is everything to her. And so what you're going to do is eventually try to put attention back in. Hey, coach, should I text her? Should I let her come over? Should I let her spend the night? These are all value to you that a lot of people sit here and argue about all day on the Internet as to what's most, most important and which one makes you a lesser or more of a man. Remember, money can be made, but a lot of you right now 
are giving up a lot of money trying to pay attention to a woman. And eventually you'll start spending money on her after you've spent a considerable amount of time trying to pay attention to her. Okay, and then at the end of life, by the time you hit 62, you got a whole fistful of dollars and no life left. Okay, what about energy? Energy is expended. It is also consumed. This is the point that I want to get to this slide right here. It is also consumed. Most men do not get energy back from women. Most times you give her energy. Case in point, have you ever had a conversation with a woman? What is the majority of the conversation? It is normally her telling you something. She might ask you some questions, but those questions are to measure the meat. She's measuring the meat. Well, what do you do for a living? This is her talking. You guys never ask them questions back. Why are you a single mama? Are you receiving child support? Are you on EBT or WIC? Why do you live with a roommate at 32? You don't never ask them none of this, all right? But then they asking you all of that. Why come you broke? How come you got a Honda Civic? Where do you do for a living? Where do you work? Where do you see yourself in five years? But she's expending your energy and she plugged into you. Your battery's draining. The more time you spend with her, and what I teach men of the law of depreciating, uh, the law of the, what is it? I can't even remember what it is. Yeah, the law of diminishing returns. That's the thing, a concept that I teach men. The more time you put into something, the less return you're going to get from it. And that could be anything, including relationships. There's a point where it peaks and crests, and then every minute, hour you spend with it, you're not getting anything back in return. Like you spend two hours talking to a woman, blah, 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 blah. Then she lies on her back. You rub her belly. And then that was your peak or crest. And I'm going to tell you what, what does she want? Well, I just want to cuddle. Perhaps I'll spend the night. Perhaps maybe we'll have breakfast together. Now, all of that's nothing to you. You were like, you could have left after I said, roar! And you would have been fine. You would have just fell asleep. But now she's getting her value back into you and her value is lessening to you. And the more you do this with low quality women, the more you don't even want to look at this human being anymore because you only did it because you were not disciplined with your meat. You selected a low value woman and in return, now she's hanging out with you, sucking up your energy, attention, and time. When you could have said, would you take 250 to leave? And you would have been exactly where you wanted to be. I know this is not popular opinion, but it's all the same. Most times, if you do it right, you'll have more energy and attention and time to place on things that actually have value to you. Most of the time, the women that you're messing with have no value to you other than what you needed them for. Speaking of, expending energy, you consume it, just like time and money, you can deplete it. How many people were on five miles? After five miles, what happens? Your energy is depleted. Sometimes you don't have any additional time to spend or attention to give anyone else after you've done that. You know what else has energy? Your seed. Your seed. You guys produce millions of seed per day. And that seed has value. Can you put a monetary value on your seed? Yes, go to the child support office and ask every man, how much did that seed cost you? And he'll tell you $1,500 a month, whatever that amount is. If he's married and he has a family, how much does that seed cost you? Well, the mortgage, the car note, the, the uh, college investment plan, the clothes, the vacations, the, uh, the tutoring, the sports leagues, that seed cost you a lot. That was energy. That was your energy. Because when you let that seed out of your ball sack, you was expending some energy, I can guarantee you, unless you was giving her the five-stroke special. 
you were expending energy to produce that seed. Friction, all of that stuff, Newton's laws. And what happened? What happened when she got that seed? She got that energy. Well, some women are very nasty when they get to your seed. They swallow it. They be rubbing it into their body. They'll keep it in their whole body. They'll say, I still got the seed that you put in me last night at work. They'll, you'll be like, well, why is she doing that? Because it has value. It gives her energy. You do something like that. She does something with it. And then she's, she act like she accomplished something with it. And she did because she has something very valuable from you. In essence, your money, attention, and time and energy is way more valuable than her. She knows it, you don't. And we spend a lot of our time being undisciplined with these things. Then after a while, you meet the love of your life. Oh, perhaps we'll move in together. And then eventually, all the money, energy, and attention, and time is going one way, and then the law of diminishing returns is coming another way. Who's had relationships like this? Raise your hand. All right, where it's just like, oh, you know, try to, try to manage it. You know, he's like happy wife, happy life time right now. Well, here's the deal. This slide doesn't want to come up. They don't want to do the TikTok slide, okay? TikTok. Now we're in a situation where they have more social currency than you, right? And so you value them more because you like, they appeal to you in a sexual manner. And you're willing to give up your meat, your entire future, your priorities, your hobbies, your lifestyle, your experiences for this. This is the number one thing. And we now have seen more naked women in our lives than our fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, their father, the founding forefathers of the United States have seen in their entire lives combined. And we can see it nonstop. And so we put value on it because everybody else is putting value to it. And so you believe she has more value, but your meat has way more value. She's doing this to get your meat. So there's a silent contract when relationships start. The silent contract works like this. Wait a minute. The silent contract works like this. Well, if we're in a relationship now, you must listen to me, right? You must spend time with me. So you say, hey, I'm going to give you my commitment, which is another important asset that you guys give away. You commit to her. Now, naturally, biologically, you don't need to commit to one woman. You're not built for that. Now, socially and morally, maybe that's a different conversation. Because if you have kids, it is best to raise them in a two-parent household. The statistics bear that out, no, no doubt. So socially, yes, it is the best way to raise children. It has very little benefit to you, though. It has benefit more to the women and the children and society at large. Then you come in, well, it benefits you, too. But you gave that commitment away because biologically, what do you want to do? When you get married, hey, who's been married before? Anybody? All right, so when the gentlemen that have been married or you continue to be married, have you ever desired another woman sexually? I just want to know this. Just be honest. You be looking at ass all the time. You be like, damn, if I wasn't married, I'd be pouncing on that. Some of you pouncing on it too. You know, some of y'all married and pouncing on it. On the low low. Because that's what you naturally want to do. But you gave your commitment to her and you said, baby, I'll never want to pounce on another ounce of flesh ever again. I'll never look at another woman like I look at you. She could blow up like the Goodyear blimp and you still got to go pounding away at that pound of flesh. That's the only woman that you committed to sexually. It doesn't make sense. Only to the social construct does it make sense. Only to the child does it make sense. But to you, it doesn't make sense. But you gave away that valuable thing to her. 
And many times they take it for granted. Have you ever heard women tell you what you should be doing? Well, as a man, you should be X, Y, and Z. You should be pulling out chairs, putting coats over puddles. You should be walking me down the street. You should be scheduling dates. You should be paying for dates. I, I will never pay for a first date. You should be taking me to the fair, the farmer's market, the festival. You should be. That's the entitlement of women in which they are putting a silent contract on you with the commitment. Oh, you know, if we were together, we would be together forever and it would be fabulous. There's a whole bunch of invisible ink and fine print connected to that that you're not aware of. You're only thinking about sex. Oh, I love having sex with her. Yes, she'd be great to have around. And then she starts saying, you should be doing this. In order to keep me, you should be doing what? Spending, going out to, to the fair. Money. Energy. You should be giving me your energy. You should only give me your energy. No other woman. Attention. Pay attention to me. When I come home and I'm telling you a story, don't look at the football game. Matter of fact, there's one minute left in the football game and hear her ass come. It's tie score. Quarterback about to drop back. Hey, uh, can you pay attention to me? And you're going, holy. That's in the contract, because if you tell her ass, get, the, get away from me. Oh, I'll go to someone that's going to give me attention. Now you lost a girl and everything you invested. Time. You don't spend any more time with me. You're always on that computer looking at Coach Greg Adams. Okay. You're always doing this, you're always doing that. That is the silent contract that you exchange with your commitment. And many people are entitled to it. This is causing the disruption on the dating landscape. It is a one-sided thing in which you're struggling to figure out how to balance this out. The people who master this, this is why you watch them on YouTube. And I say the free agent lifestyle. Basically, these broad, 90% of them are trash. I ain't paying no attention to that yet. They'd be lucky if I give them a piece of salami, right? And guys are like, how you gonna do that? I have discipline. I understand what the silent contract is. I want no part of it. But you wanna go along with the silent contract. What about the social contract? What about the social contract? Well, the social contract of you giving your commitment is you can no longer look at another woman's ass. And if somebody catches you, how dare you? You're such a bad man. You have a wife and a girlfriend and she's pregnant at home and you have the nerve to look at that 24 year old walking around there with the pumps on and the pencil skirt and the blouse with her titties hanging out. How dare you? That's the social contract. Now the social contract on their side, they completely violated. They step all over it. Uh, so I understand what I'm supposed to give you. Uh, what are you as a woman supposed to give me? Huh? Yeah, uh, because I'm giving you this. Well, what are you gonna give me back? I'm giving you me. Well, I'm the table. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, I understand. You're the table and all, but I'm giving you tangible, measurable resources. I can measure the money, looking at my statement. I can measure the energy every time I bust seed down your gullet. Those are millions of seed going down your gullet. I can measure the attention by monitoring how much screen time I pay to you and how much attention I give to you. Honey, listen to this goofy story about the women and human resources that we don't care. But you gotta listen. It's measurable. The time that you spend with her going to her family events, the festival, the fair, the farmer's markets, the dates, you can measure that. Shit, I went out there on Friday with you. I went on Saturday. I'm going to watch the game. Oh, well, my nephew has his first birthday party coming up. We should attend it. You can measure the time. Ladies, what do I get back from you? You get me. Now, what is that me she's talking about? The me she's talking about is this right here. Well, see, while she's with you, everybody gets to see her. Before she was with you, everybody that saw her got to be inside of her. Before she was with you, she's tried this transactional relationship dozens and dozens of times and came up Owen, as I call it, Owen 50, Owen 100. Not one man has succeeded 
in her life in this, and now she found Joaz. And she's going to try to play book one more time. This is what you're getting from her. Most of them are on social media. Most of them are marketing themselves. Most of them are not committing back to you what you're giving back to them. And that's all you ask. You're like, can I get something measurable and tangible from you? Perhaps maybe you can cook or clean. How about that? How dare you ask me to cook and clean? What type of Neanderthal caveman are you? So they don't want to cook or clean. Sometimes you'll meet a woman that'll say, I don't mind doing any cooking or cleaning. And then she puts the tombstone pizza in the oven and the dino chicken nuggets and the macaroni and cheese out the box. And you're like, damn, this is a hell of a cook. <laughs> and while she's cleaning for your ass, you know what she's cleaning up? She's looking at you. I mean, you should be doing equal amounts of this work too. You should be cleaning while I'm cleaning. She's keeping score. And so this is a violation of the social contract because they're entitled to your meat, which you can measure. And then she tries to couple this with equal partnership, power couple. We do the same. But when the spider shows up, you kill that. When the burglar comes in, you kill him. You're the whole night 24-7 uh, 24-7 security, 24-7 bug man, 24-7 plumber, 24-7 call the plumber, 24-7 car wash guy, oil change guy. You're literally giving up tangible resources to her. And many of you, I promise you, if you actually did this, and most people don't want to do this because they don't want to see how one-sided their contract is. If you actually measured what you get back to her, get what she gets back from you in today's modern dating, in today's modern relationships, I can almost guarantee you it's a 90-10 relationship. You give the most, she gives back very little. But the little she gives might be worth something to you to be in that commitment. Like you might be a guy that can't get no more women. So you're lucky to have her lie on her back. You're like, <laughs> nobody else was doing this, so I got me a sucker. <laughs> but not me. I'm like, they a dime a dozen out here. I can pick them all. <laughs> eating them like grapes out this milk. You know, the, that's the current marketplace. So if you find value in the little bit that you're getting back from her, and you don't tell her to step her value up, then you are in a situation where you don't know how to negotiate with your meat. Let's talk about this real quick. These slides, they're kind of out of order. Let's talk about millionaires. Excuse me. Odds of being a millionaire changes as you age. There's several graphs that I want to point here, but this one broke it down racially, which I was interested in. So I talk about time relative to men. If you invest your time early in your life, by the time you hit a certain age, you should be able to hit your stride. Most men at this age, they trade in their money, attention, and time for one woman. Okay, And if that woman works out great, then they get to spend more money and attention and energy on her. If it doesn't work out, the social contract says she can continue to take from you because she once slept with you. What is that called? Alimony or palimony. If she can't get that from you, then she'll drag you into court for more attention. Any court she drags you in, it is an attention grab. It is not about really the money, but she can make it about the money. It is not about the time. It is about the attention that she can get from you. Because now your ass got to show up. Damn, she dragged me into the domestic violation court. Hey, uh, judge, I never put a hand on her. Matter of fact, she hit me. She in the court just soaking it up. <laughs> Made your ass skip off work. You see what I mean? This is all a kind of an attention grab. A lot of them can't walk away. So look at the money right here. Asians seem to be killing it economically here. But as you... When you're under 40 at the bottom, when you're under 40, less chance of becoming a millionaire. But as you age up over 40 and you don't get married and divorced, you don't have toxic relationships, you can invest your time into yourself. I guarantee you, you'll have better chance of hitting a million at 40 and above than the guy that got divorced already, than the guy that's still chasing uh, women. 
and running game on them and all of this garbage. Okay? Even for black men who have a low chance of being a millionaire, it still increases with age. That 40-year-old mark, I promise you, I mean, I hit, I'm in my mid-40s now. I hit that 40, and it was like, phew, it took off. Life took the hell off. I was like, wow, what happened? Well, first of all, my testosterone increased. My standards in women increased. I was least likely to be with a low-value woman. My money started to increase. My attention and currency started to increase. And then I said, forget the nightclub. I'm, my old ass ain't going to no damn nightclub talking to no broad, so what? I had energy to put into other things. I'm gonna read that quote by Napoleon Hill in a second here. Look at this pay uh, chart here. The orange line is the women, or it's orange is red. That purple line is men. You hear about gender pay gap all the time. And that pay gap is associated with the time women hit the wall, the biological wall. And this is the period that they focus on, because sometimes they might have had kids and stepped out of their career, or they hit the point where that degree no longer has value and their earning has peaked. They decided to go major in something and that value, you know, it made money between up until age 32, but now that degree doesn't make as much money. But look at where men's income peaks. Okay, early 20s, this is when you struggle with women because you have no meat or no money to exchange with them, right? You know, have, you're broke. <laughs> this is why young men say, I will never pay for women. I will never take her ass out to Applebee's. I'm going to get the peace leave for free. Well, you're saying that because you're broke, right? $250 to you right now will break, break your bank. To an older man, it's pennies in the damn it's a drop in the bucket. So it doesn't matter to an older guy. This is why you see, do you see older men with younger women? Now, maybe not in Pennsylvania. <laughs> but go to L.A., New York, D.C., Miami, Houston, Dallas. See, you're going to see young women at Mastro's chatting it up with older men. No problem, no sweat because they're there for his resource. But take, take a look at where men take off. The women's peak right there, 40, 41, sometimes it's a little bit. Look at where it shoots off. 40, phew, gone. And they could do this well until 60, 65, 70. Watch a TV show and they bring out some old expert, like an expert as a male. The expert for the woman will be a young woman, 25, She'll look good, she'll have long hair, ah, blah, 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 blah. Watch, they'll bring out the male expert. It'll be an old ass man. It'll be Alan Dershowitz ass, old ass man. Well, here's the expert, the legal expert, and it's an old ass man, why? Because he has value. And he's gonna continue to earn well into it because he can. Have y'all seen 70 year old women grinding at work? 50 year old women grinding at work. They're ready to pack it in, and they're ready to find a man. They ain't grinding to 50, 60, 70. The rare exception proves the rule. But men, I've seen handymen, 65, picking up ladders. I swear to God, I saw these two handymen. I mean, they, I don't know what they were doing, construction guys. I was like, damn, 60, 62, and they were grinding because they have to, because that's what we do. That's part of our social contract. So in this, understand, I'm gonna read this. This is Napoleon Hill right here. Uh, Napoleon Hill wrote a book called Outwitting the Devil. He also wrote a book, Thinking Grow Rich. I believe the Outwitting the Devil book was written in the 30s, 1930s. But his family, he never put it out because of how controversial the book is. And so his family just put it out after the 2000s. I suggest everyone read it because it's free. You can go to YouTube and listen to it on audio. You don't have to read because men don't read. That's why they're behind women. Women be reading and soaking up all the information. They find a person, they invest in that person. <laughs> 
They buy all the person's book. They go to all the seminars. Dudes don't do any of this stuff. They're like, I ain't paying this dude to give me valuable information. I won't even like his video. So let's read this. Why men over 40 actually start to make money? This is what he said here. I would do it in my best Napoleon Hill voice, but I can't. He says, I discovered from an analysis of over 25,000 people that men who succeed in an outstanding way seldom do so before the age of 40. And more often, they do not strike their real pace until they are well beyond the age of 50. Remember I said that. Testosterone decreases, you can focus, okay, you're not chasing low quality women. You probably have now success with women. Now you can focus. He says, this fact was so astounding that it prompted me to go into a study of its causes more carefully, carrying the investigation over a period of time of more than 12 years. This study discloses the fact that the major reason why the majority of men who succeed do not begin to do so before the age of 40 to 50 is their tendency to dissipate their energies through overindulgence in physical expressions of the emotion of sex. Remember your 20s, old gentleman, my older gentleman. Remember your 20s? Oh, my God. A woman walks by you. <sighs> she probably didn't even get in the shower, but she smells like fruits and berries. Oh. The pheromones are bouncing. You're saluting. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm ready to go. If only she would give me a chance. And she's looking at her TikTok, her Instagram. Hi, lady. Oh, damn, that didn't work. All right. And you do it to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. Doing what? Meat, energy, attention, and time. The old man is like, I got some shit to do, and I make about $1,000 an hour. And I'm successful, and it's working. I'm not messing that up. I got a wife at home that I cannot get aroused by anymore. So what I'll do is find me a young muse, a young, attractive woman, and I'll give her what's equivalent to an hour of my income for her to do debaucherous things on me. And she'll do it. Because $1,000 to her is gonna meet her economic needs. Now, you got an hour or two with her, you treated her like a pure gentleman. You treated her better than the younger guys have ever treated her. And get, I'll let you know, I have women that I deal with, 19, 24, 26. They're like, you treat me better than I can get from these scoundrels out here my age. So now I can do so because I know how to begin and end the deal. I'll start it and I'll say, this is your end time. You will be going home. But until then, we will enjoy ourselves. I will get what I need. She gets what she needs and everybody parts. I find this way more valuable than any other transaction that I've ever had. But the reason why I find it valuable is because it doesn't cost me that much. Everything else costs me everything. But you're too busy trying to please the social contract because society tells you, if you want to be a good man, you'll be such a good man if you marry her and commit to her and take her out and spend time and energy and attention and money, and you do it, and I guarantee you, you spend more money than I spend. All right, next part of the paragraph here. This study discloses the fact that the major reason why the majority of men succeed, I already read that part right here, the majority of men never learn the urge of sex has other possibilities. This is true. Which far transcends in importance than of mere physical expression. So if I impregnate a woman, what did that five, mis five minutes of five strokes cost me? Whew. Okay, what if the end evening doesn't end the way she wants and she loses her mind? I've seen this. She throws a drink in your face. She said, you're not paying attention to me. She causes a stir. Your neighbors wake up. The dogs are barking. What the hell's going on here? If you're in a committed relationship with her and she 
It's just on one that day. She calls the police. This happens all the time. And you're sitting out there, well, officer, what had happened was, well. All you wanted was some sex. Admit it. You really just wanted to fornicate with her. But you traded all this energy and attention, what he's talking about right here. The urge of sex has other possibilities that you never intended, that you were trying to use all of these things to avoid those other possibilities, okay? It far transcends in importance. You knock up the wrong broad. How important is that for the rest of your life? That woman's connected to you for the rest of your life, okay? How, it was some crazy broad, okay? The majority of those who make this discovery, which I did in my 30s, do so only having wasted many years at that period when the sex energy is at its height, high testosterone, prior to the age of 45 to 50. This usually is followed by noteworthy achievement. You're looking at that right now, and I guarantee you, this is not the height of where I'm going. When I figured this out and I wrote this book, Free Agent Lifestyle, and I said, you know what? I chose the wrong path in dealing with women. I'm gonna choose a right path. And this right path has allowed me to take off and transcend where I was when I wrote the book. Okay? Now, the lives of many men up to and sometimes well past the age of 40 reflects a continued dissipation of energies, attention, time, and money, which could have been more profitably turned into better channels. That resources, those four resources, definitely, their finer and more powerful emotions are sown wildly to the four winds. Out of this habit of the male grew the term sowing his wild oats. The desire for sexual expression is by far the strongest and most impelling of all the human emotions. And for this very reason, this desire, when harnessed, free agent lifestyle, outwitting the devil, when harnessed and transmuted into action, other than that of physical expression, may raise one to the status of a genius. So if you're 24, 25, 30, 31, 32, you're trying to do this and make it work. You're listening to strategies and tactics and games and pick up and pro Imagine if you took that time and you transmuted it into something that's more valuable to you. Now, the meat that you will have, the money, energy, attention, and time, will I will promise you, will translate into easier meat from women. It will be like layup drills. Who play basketball? All right. The layup line in the pregame, everybody looking like Michael Jordan. Come on. Layup, reverse layup, dunking it between the leg. The game start, they ass on the bench. You like, damn, they was looking good in the warm up and then the five dudes working together in there screening. <laughs> Rebounding, boxing, up. those guys are playing. You're like, why his ass on the bench? He was looking like a star. Well, translate to women. When you finally get a hold of this, your money, energy, attention, and time, women will be clamoring after you. They will line up for your ass. Uh, sir, I'd like to get some attention from you. The roles will reverse. The roles will reverse. You go on any sugar daddy app, plus 40, you're gonna be piled up with women. You go to any lounge and bar, and you sit your old gray hair, gray beard ass down, the girls might want to leave with a young, virile man, but they might see your ass over there, watch bling. Minding your own damn business, buying drinks. Hmm. If you bring another woman with you, then the attention will be triple. Bring a female friend with you. Let's go to the bar. 
Not no nightclub bullshit, okay? You go to the bar, you sit down. I guarantee you other women will be like, who the hell is that? What does he do? I wonder what he does. The conversation will be like that. Not only that, your social circle will be full of people like that because you're not rolling with bums anymore. Remember you rolling with your boy at the club? You're broke. You couldn't even pay the cover charge barely. You can't buy no girls, no drinks. Y'all in the back of the club looking at booty. I'm going to talk to her, bro. Oh, she with that guy. Okay, yeah. You doing that bullshit all night. When you got time and value, I guarantee you, you're not doing any of that bullshit. And women are going to be like, that guy is the most interesting guy in the world. Was the interesting guy in the world clamoring for her attention, spending money, energy, attention, and time? Was he young? Was he muscular? The image of that guy was an old ass man with money, surrounded by women, with ease, layup drill. You don't even have to be attractive. How many people have the, the meme of the girl on the boat and then they show you the owner of the boat that you never see in the picture that she posts on Instagram? And it's an old dude in a G-string in Miami all tanned up with a big beer belly? I promise you, women will look past all of that in a second. And you'll get to where you need to get with them so you can focus on your time. It is not the most popular opinion to be out here teaching you because it's seen as less than as a man to pay for women. But that is a broke man's mentality. That is a 20 to 30 year old mentality. I'm not gonna spend money cause you ain't got none. That's why you ain't gonna spend no damn money. If you had it, you don't mind $150. Just take that. Just take that. Sign the check. Be like, all right, uh, let's part ways tonight. Oh, no, I thought we would spend some extra time. Oh, okay, all right, well, come on. But, you know, I have to be at work at 6 in the morning, so you do have to be out by 1230. Is that okay? Totally fine. You will fit. The cooperation will be there. Doesn't mean, it's, doesn't mean she cannot strike you like a cobra later on. That's a whole different conversation how to protect your wealth dealing with women. That is a whole different topic that we may get to someday. Other than that, this is where you can find me on the tube. Um, I discuss this topic in a variety of topics. Uh, you can find my books on Audible and with the old school print format for old people. <laughs> I'm just so, I always just say it. Old people be like, we need to save the newspaper. It's important stuff in there. Young people ain't trying to get rid of the news. You know, young people ain't trying to worry about the newspaper. But for old people, or for people that want the physical, I'm still that guy. I, I want the physical. Like when I go to, I want something, I want to go to the store and purchase it. You can barely do that now. You'd be like, I want them Jordans. I would go to Foot Locker. Oh, we don't have those. We can order them and they'll be here in three days. What? So you could have just stayed at home, Nike.com like young people do. They go right to the internet to get their stuff. Uh, but we do have those on Amazon and all that stuff. Uh, what else? Uh, free Agent Lifestyle Podcast. This is basically going to be the playback on my live stream. This is absolutely free. No investment to you. It is on SoundCloud, Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, sometimes Anchor. They don't take sometimes to my RSS code and they don't update it properly. Uh, this is my website. You can go to gregadams1.com and get additional information. I do coaching programs. I do a money mindset program for, for men to get their meat in, in, in priority. We discuss a variety of topics. That's an additional cost in the coaching programs. And uh, there's a free ebook on there. It's called 52 Things That All Men Should Do Before Considering Marriage. Okay, and that's free. Sometimes if your junk mail filter is extremely high, it won't come to you, and you have to email me, and then about 10 months later, you'll get the response back. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I got to hire somebody to that. But thank you. If you have any questions, go ahead and go to the mic. I appreciate you guys. Welcome back to the 21 Convention Second Patriarch Edition live in Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the 22 Convention. Welcome back to the 21 Convention 2020 of Orlando, Florida. 
being held for the first time ever at our very first and inaugural 21 Summit event. Welcome to 21 Summit in Orlando, Florida. Well, here we go. We risked again with the 22 convention, the Patriarch and 21 convention, all three stages together in one event. Not only did we sit down and say, we're gonna to come together in meet in mass, but we're gonna take it a step further. We are gonna dare have a conversation about the sexes openly, honestly, and engage the woman that could been. Like I am amazed at how well this went. We did a brand new event, we did the second patriarch, and we did the main event for the 19th time. It's so much more than sitting in an audience watching a man on a stage. The conversations in the hallways, the connections that people make, the challenging, the collaborations. And that's what we need, it all starts with men. And it's not just men, that's what I like about this. You know, we don't want to like overreact uh, to feminism and then, and then hate women, that's not it. This is about men getting their act together, doing what they're made to do. You had meals, you had to run security, you had to run travel plans, you had to ensure people were where they needed to be. Three stages, cameras everywhere, and it was pulled off with, with flawless execution. It's evolved so much. Um, I really appreciate how Anthony has allowed you speakers to evolve and to grow and to share that and to encourage that with all the other men here. Um, to hear so much talk on family and fatherhood, there's more depth, there's more room for who they could be. Is the word patriarchy or patriarch offensive to you in any way? Not to me personally. Okay. Not at all. It's something that I, I cherish it. I love it. I grew up You cherish it. the patriarchy. I do. In mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women led by men hopes to make women great again. Well, women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, Not my yes, words. Me too. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's ultimate event for women. Yeah, Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza. You say no to the toxic, bullying, feminist dogma. <laughs> Patriarchy is the future. It's good to see it in person. I'm just, until I got here and saw it, and you can see the people in the audience, you see the men that are here committed to listening. I mean, it's just changed my idea of what the conference is. The professionalism, the staff, the way everything is organized, it's given me a different perspective about this particular idea, and I'm ready to put some more fire into it. Welcome to Dream World, ladies and gentlemen.